Welcome back to Agents of Mayhem. Let's talk about city design. How do you make a city that is better than the sum of its parts? Well, the secret is that you have to know what you want out of your city. And that can vary. So, for example, I want a city that feels like it exists even when I'm not looking. And that means I want to know what street I'm on. I want to know who lives here and what they think of me. I want to know how this is relative to another street that I was on before. These sorts of concerns allow me to believe that this city exists even when it's not directly being rendered at me, and uh, that's why I play games like Yakuza. But not all games have that priority. This game came out in a time when open world games were not about exploration, but were about following mission objectives. That was the joke, remember? Oh, if you played the new Assassin's Creed, the map is made entirely out of objective markers. Have you found all the secrets in Fallout 4? If you're within 10 kilometers, they're on your HUD. It was that era, and this game definitely has that sort of feel. It's a game where you're not supposed to explore the city. You're supposed to watch the city while you go from mission objective to mission objective. You're supposed to experience the city. And that's fine. It's not my favorite thing, but it's fine. Just to really hammer that home, you can't drive in this city, like just go out and drive. There's always going to be giant purple floating arrows telling you where to go. They, they're constantly saying, don't pay attention to the city, pay attention to the giant purple floating arrows. That's the kind of game this is. And even if you manage to get rid of the giant purple floating arrows, they'll put up a permanent giant purple bar of text blocking the right hand side of the screen, telling you how to get your giant purple arrows back. So, this is not a city that's built to be explored, and the city is designed with that particular mindset. This city is supposed to feel great as you're moving between objectives, and it's supposed to feel great when you're doing a mission. And, to a large extent, they succeed. This city feels great to drive. When you're driving around between two mission objectives, it's it's just like, oh yeah, it's crunchy and, and great. It's like arcadey and meaty and it just feels good to drive in this city. All of the roads, oh, I pressed the wrong button there. <laughs> Sorry. All of the roads are just the right width for you to weave between traffic. All of the turns are just right so that they're tuned to your exact turning styles. Uh, you're always going flat out. There's no like hills or anything. It's intended for you to have that super agent sort of feel, you know, where you're like, oh, zoom, zoom. And hear Peter Gunn music and watch things explode and all sorts of jazz. That is the sort of experience they want you to have when you're driving around in the city, and it works. Even if you didn't have the purple arrows distracting you, you wouldn't be able to explore this city in a car. It's not built for it. It's, first off, way too small. By the time you've moved the car 10 feet, there is something new to explore. In games where exploring by car is valid, uh, like GTA, for example, there are vast stretches of just car space. Like, oh, I haven't seen a building in 10 minutes. You have to have a lot of space if you're going to explore via car because a car covers a lot of ground. That's kind of what it does. And this map is just too small. It's a very small map, so it's very good at, you know, oh, here, go 800 meters to the next mission objective. Go, 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 go. It's not so good at, oh, hey, drive for the next 20 minutes in whichever direction you like. We've already done like eight circuits in this video. It's, uh, it's pretty small. That is, uh, really well done, though. I mean, their objective wasn't to create an explorable city. It was to create a city that feels great, and it does. I also love how it looks. This cartoon city is fantastic. It's a little bit bloomy, a little bit post effectsy yes. but it always feels like you're somewhere interesting and crunchy whenever you stop and get out and shoot some dudes. That's the whole reason it's here. The city doesn't doesn't have an assembled form that is conducive to exploration but it always feels like you're somewhere when you get to a mission objective and then decide to shoot somebody it always looks good the various sectors have different color grades so that you're always feeling like you're somewhere interesting based on the color grading as well uh it's, it's fantastic another thing they do really well is the streets which sounds a little bit strange but hear me out most 
open world city games have terrible streets. Because one of the things you need to do when building your streets is make sure that the end of your street, the sight line to the end of your street, is clear enough that you can see where you're going. And most games don't do that. Most games will block off the sight line with something, and this game doesn't. You can always see what's at the end of the street, and it's always super clear what that is and where you're headed. For example, if I were to take this turn here... Well, I have to actually go down the street. <laughs> you can see that I'm headed over into the construction area, and that's super clear because I can see it. Uh, and then if I were to take another turn, like, say, here... Where am I headed? Oh, I'm headed down uh, just off the tech sector. I'm headed towards that giant uh, black spider place with all of the shops and stuff. I can always tell where I'm going, and it's more than that. There's always a city gradient, meaning that the sides of the street, the buildings on the sides of the roads, always change over the course of the road. So you can see how the city changes along the road as you're moving, not just where you're going in the long run. That's really powerful. If I can see that the buildings are going from mom and pop shops and getting bigger and bigger and bigger, that really tells me that I'm coming into an area where it's not mom and pop shops anymore. We're turning into an office district. Similarly, when I can see that there is suddenly a, you know, a blast of purple, I know that this is going to be a temple area. All of these little details really sell the experience. They're really well done. Uh, I really enjoy being in this city as much as I'm allowed to. But that's kind of the problem, isn't it? I'm not really allowed to be in this city very much. So, let's talk about uh, some of the things I don't like. The city isn't built for exploration. It's not built to let me be in it. And that is a tremendous problem for me. Uh, and this is something where obviously it's a matter of, of your personal objectives, right? In terms of your development. But even games where the purpose is to be very mission-based, the cities are still allowed to exist. The cities are still given a lot of attention so that the player will feel like any given spot in the city is different. Just as an example, most games have a difference in how the various districts play. Uh, and usually that would be something like different evil overlords. So if you were playing Crackdown, Every district has its own evil overlord. If you're playing Yakuza, every district has its own mafia boss that has a very different sense of style. Uh, and, you know, most games like this are like that. But that doesn't happen in this game. In this game, it's pretty much uh, everybody is identical everywhere. All you do is fight the same enemies and pick up the same treasure chests no matter what you're doing. Now, to some extent, that is... Um, changed a little bit just because the the navigation is so different from sector to sector. It's very different when you're running along construction girders as opposed to medium-sized office buildings as opposed to low-slung residential district buildings. That part does feel pretty different and I do enjoy that, but we're always fighting the same enemies. We're always picking up the same loot. There's no there's no indication that any of these places are distinct or unique in any way and that is a real letdown. Uh, just as an example, one of the biggest problems I've got with this city are the big black spider bases. I'll show you once we get to the top. These big black spider bases, uh, there's like six of them, and... How did I fall through? There's like six of them, and you can't tell them apart. And they're all identical, and none of them helps to sell the district they're in. There's like one in each district, but they're not special. They're identical per district, which means that you never really get a sense that the districts are different. They're all the same. Here's one. You see it? That, that over there? That's one of the giant black spider things. There's another one over there. See it? Giant black spider thing. There's one in each district, and they are literally the same. There's no, like, one of them doesn't belong to the weapons dealer, and one of them doesn't belong to the tech bro. They're all exactly the same. And uh, that really reduces the kinds of um, joy you can get from engaging with them, because I'm not going to be engaging with Steel Toe. I'm going to be engaging with another pack of random goons. And to make matters worse, they always get retaken automatically by the computer after an hour and a half. So engaging with them is completely pointless. It gets you nothing. Hooray. That's... Uh, 
probably more of a constraint of time and budget and freedom rather than a choice. I doubt they set out to make all of their bases, all of their sectors identical. I'm sure that at some point they had planned to make these districts have their own supervillains attached. Um, and that would have been a lot of fun because when you do that, you can do a lot of stuff because you can make the whole, the whole area look like that supervillains motif. So if Steel Toe was was that base over there, then that whole district would be made over as like a cyberpunky machine fetish district, and it would have been really cool looking and different and interesting. But that would have cost money and time, and clearly they didn't have enough of either. So that's one of those decisions where I doubt it was made on purpose. I think that was constraints imposed on them. Uh, similarly, in many games where a city is supposed to feel like it exists, the game will give you a lot of engagement points inside of the district that are not related to the core play of the game. For example, in Yakuza, although you do beat up a variety of enemies that are themed around each district, you uh, you also get a chance to purchase things from shops and do side quests from people who are actually connected to the district you're in. And uh, you can even buy places and run them and that sort of stuff. And all of those things really help to connect us to the district. They give us something to attach to, especially the option to buy and manage shops. That really helps to give us something to pay attention to in an ongoing state. We're like, okay, yeah, uh, you know, over in the, the Chinese district, I've got a shop that I need to help out with and that sort of stuff. And I think that's what these bases were supposed to do. We're like, we're like going to have to try and manage them so that when they're recaptured by the enemy or when the enemy attacks them, we have to make sure that doesn't go through and we maintain control of the sector. It didn't work out. But that kind of idea can really help to attach us to the city if it does work out. So uh, now we're going to talk about something that I actively don't like. This is something that I just plain old disagree with them on, and that is landmarks. To me, landmarks are an incredible part of a city. They're incredibly important. But what's important is how they radiate, how they influence the city around them. Just as an easy example, this is one of the obvious landmarks. It's the tech sector. We can always tell how to get to the tech sector, but can you tell whether we're to the south, or north, or east, or west of the tech sector? The tech sector icon, is, or the landmark, is just a giant blob of twisty bits. I can't tell what direction we are relative to it. And I still can't. I've been playing this game for 40 hours, and I have no idea where we are relative to that building. That's a problem, because when I'm making a map of a city in my head, a fictional city, I'm making it relative to the landmarks. I'm not just trying to get to the landmarks. I'm trying to move around the landmarks. I'm trying to build a map of what's near these landmarks in various directions. And I can't do that if I can't tell what direction I am from the landmark. And all of the landmarks in this game are undirected. They have no sense of, of direction to them, which makes it extremely hard to build a mental model of where you are. This is especially true of the black spider bases that we were talking about, because there's six of them. So not only is each one individually impossible to tell apart from which direction you're going, you don't even know which one you're at. So it's like, oh, I spotted a black spider base, so I could be, oh, literally anywhere in the city. Got it, thanks. But the worst landmark for me is that one. Yeah, can you not tell what I'm looking at? It's, uh, it's that one. It, it's that one. That one? That one. The whole city is ringed by this giant donut of eternal mid-sized towers going off to the end of space and time. And the problem is they're quite loud. I can't, with my you know human eye, instinctively see what I'm supposed to be getting out of this view. Now, in terms of what I'm supposed to be getting, I'm supposed to be understanding that that is the loading dock. That is the river loading dock right there. But because there's so much noise just past it, what I see is a giant, endless city. I don't get the chance to really feel that loading dock. I don't, I don't really know it exists. And that donut of buildings is basically the same all the way around. So if we look over here, this is the residential sector. Can you tell that it's the residential sector? Or, like me, do you simply see a little bit of residential followed by an endless city? 
So once again, this donut is an undirected landmark. If the donut varied from place to place, then that would be something I could use to attach more meaning to these vistas. So if the donut didn't have any big buildings in this direction, but instead was just residential or you know petered off into farms or something, I would be able to say, oh, that direction is residential. I wouldn't have to try and say, okay, well, what part of what I'm seeing is actual play space and what part isn't? Similarly, if I looked over here and I saw a bunch of warehouses stretching off to the horizon, I would be able to say, oh, that's the warehouse direction. I don't have to stop and try and consider what parts I'm seeing and what parts I'm not seeing. That's, um, that's really important to me, and this donut makes it so that when you're on top, when you're looking down over the city, you actually know less about how the city is laid out than if you're just driving. Because the donut is so loud, I can't actually see the city. All I can see is the frickin' donut. And that means that the higher I get, the less I understand the layout of the city. Oh, and to me, that's just a bad choice. I just don't like it. That's, that's you know, my personal preference there. Related to this, sort of, there are a lot of iconic elements, and this is true in most cities, right? Like, for example, there'll be uh, the docks, or there'll be uh, the observatory. And most games are like that. Most open-world city games have particular iconic set pieces inside their city. For example, the university, or whatever, right? Depends on the game. And normally, what you do is you have supportive elements going out from... Oh, that was the wrong character to jump with. Oh, well. <laughs> Normally what you do is you have supportive elements going out from that iconic building. So if you have an iconic um, uh, university that you want to uh, have, have an impact, then you create a university district. And you've got that iconic university, but you've also got radiating around it a bunch of university town support buildings, you know, cheap pizzerias and terrible apartment buildings. Uh, if you want to see that in a game, you could play um, Watch Dogs 2. I think you'll have to involve, I, th I think you have to install some malware before you can play it, but you can play it, and you'll see that they have that particular kind of setup. And thus my tale that is uh, something I really enjoy, because it means that I can tell when an iconic element exists, even if I'm not looking at that iconic element. I can tell that the university always exists because the buildings I'm currently moving through wouldn't exist without the university to support. You see? It gives that lasting sense of presence that I really enjoy. That's not necessary in this kind of game. I'm not trying to say they should have done that, because their focus here was on creating a game where it feels cool to wander around the city. And so it doesn't make any sense to, or not to wander around the city, just to, um, to move from mission to mission in the city. So it wouldn't make any sense to try and add a sense of permanence to something where they're literally building the city around the idea that there is no sense of permanence. But that's how I prefer it, and it's fun to see the difference between how they do it here and how they do it there. For example, if we were to open the map, these loading docks over here, um, this cargo bay, this is uh, one of the major parts of the game. A ton of stuff happens here. It's where everybody brings in their illegal robot arms. Um, this is something that should be supported by warehouses. It's basically the big warehouse area. But there are no warehouse buildings near it. In fact, right next to it, we have these giant skyscraper towers of office buildings. High quality office buildings, too. Why would that be what's right next to the loading docks? So obviously it doesn't matter because the point of the game is not to make sense as a city that you explore. It's to be cool when you get to, place, get to places. And it is cool to be in those locations, even if they don't make sense, you know, in a long uh, exploration sort of way. Let's talk a little bit more about distance, right? So this game is a game where you're supposed to drive from mission objective to mission mission objective, but at the end of the day, it's just more fun to walk, and I think that's mostly because walking is rarer. The ability to jump up a building and try and navigate up the sides of these towers is simply less common 
than the ability to drive a car. Every, every game has the ability to drive a car, basically. And that means that it's something where I want to run across the top of the building everywhere I go, and the city isn't built to let me do that. I'm not sure why there's so much focus on parkour, since very few of the missions benefit from it. But uh, my guess is that they thought it would be cool, and it is. However, the city isn't built for it. It's tough to explore this city on foot because it is exactly the wrong size. It's the size of a city where you're supposed to drive a car. So, for example, oh, let's go explore that. It's a long walk, right? Now, it doesn't have to be like that. There are plenty of cities built to be walkable. Uh, Paradise Killer. Yakuza. All of these games that are walkable cities, and they feel great because they're specifically intended for walking distances. Uh, you can't drive a car in those games, so that is kind of the point. Uh, in a game where you can drive a car, obviously you're going to have a hard time creating things that are shorter than car lengths, and that's something that is just plain old true. If you were to play Shadowrun, which has, a, you know, $600 million of city in it, you're still going to have this issue. So, the city is a really interesting case study. Like, what sorts of things did they want to do, and what sorts of things are just incidental because they ran out of time and budget and had someone on their back telling them weird stuff? It's, it's tough to tell how much of this city was purposeful. But purposeful or not, we can see what came out of it. And what came out of it is a city that is uniquely focused on being fun to either get from place to place in a car, like specific places, and, uh, and jump up the sides of specific buildings. That is what is fun about this city. That's what it's built to do. It's built to look good when you're there, and it's built to be fun to get from A to B. And it's rare to find a city that is so focused on those particular objectives. I don't like those objectives, because I like to explore my city, but it is still fun. Get a lot of uh, solar energy from here, bud? Whatever. <laughs> so this was a fun little case study, and I really enjoyed it. I do want to do videos on other cities, uh, like the Yakuza franchise, or um, uh, ch -ch 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 Watch Dogs 2, or something like that. Uh, but sometimes it's hard to get those to play very well. Like, if you play Yakuza, you've got to get through an enormous amount of game before the city opens up. And if you want to play Watch Dogs 2, you've got to install some malware before you can even get it to run. So, uh, maybe I'll do those things. The cities are great. But this game, you can just plain old play. So if you feel like um, this game might be fun, I recommend giving it a shot. I, I don't think I've got any more videos about it in me. Uh, but let me know if you have videos you'd like to see me make about it. See you around, everybody.